I hope you guys can hear me. I just will set a couple of things up. But yeah, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining me on this Saturday night. You guys doing good? So I have a question, I guess. So if you have something you're looking forward to in the holidays, please leave it in the comments. I'd be very interested to hear. And yeah, thanks for being on, I guess, before the starting time. Playing Hogwarts Legacy. I think I've seen clips of that online. Is it like a computer or like a some other kind of game? All right, let me get everything set up a bit better. Gold Coast, it's very exciting. The weather in Melbourne's been pretty poor, so hopefully Gold Coast will be a lot better. I'll give it a couple minutes, maybe 8.35, 8.34, and we'll get started. So yeah, anything you guys are looking forward to, let me know. And as always, if you have particular topics you want me to cover, please message me or leave a comment under these videos. You're looking forward to going, <laughs> getting ahead with Unit 4 content? Sure. Um, going out with friends? Yeah, yeah, that's always fun. Good to hear. I think you need a bit of work with whatever else you're doing. Just just for balance. Granny for next term. Yeah, that's what we'll be talking about today. Yeah, good to hear. You guys have some goals. All right, give it a couple more minutes, two minutes. Studying ahead for year 12. Does that mean you're year 11 at the moment, Dark Cloud? Really appreciate my videos. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad that you guys find them helpful. Um, I have released a lot up until this point, which should cover a lot of the main topics, especially for English, Inglang. But please have a look at the channel as well. I also have a TikTok as well. I don't, that was more to just answer people's questions. So I think if you have something oddly specific or you have a bit of time on your hands, you can just have a look at my TikTok and see if anyone had the same questions as you guys. What do I think about, okay, so this is from, wait, I feel like my posture is really bad, let me, okay, can you talk about, do a video on lab reports, I want to ace my biology and chemistry report and post this, yeah, so like the API, I can, I can talk about that a bit, um, I'll probably do a live on it, just because it's, I guess it just works better, live videos at the moment, um, so I'll definitely talk about it. But just with some advice, I guess, how did we work for our school? It's not worth a lot of marks. I remember the rubric was really, really helpful. The rubric for the EPI was highly in-depth and literally had like 0 0.5 marks, two marks for referencing. You got to keep under the word count, otherwise you lose marks. So I think if you make sure you've covered everything under there, that's really important. And also making sure you know what things like reliability, validity are. So check with the teacher, define them well in your in your actual piece and apply them well. Um, but the rubric will be highly helpful for you. And what do I think about relationships? I think they're fine. Like, like it's not really something you can control. If you meet someone, you like them, or you're already in a relationship, then you wouldn't stop it for VCE. But I also don't think VCE is a time where you'd be like actively looking for relationships because it's a bit of a weird thing to do in or just in general, but also in VC. Um, what's placement like? Placement's kind of like school again. I need to be there at 7 a.m. at the moment, and I get home maybe 4 p.m., 5 p.m. It's quite enjoyable because I'm a student. I have a lot more freedom in the hospital, and so I can you know see patients, see people, chat to them, um, try different procedures. It's sort of like I have quite a lot of freedom in the hospital, uh, which I quite enjoy. But yeah, it is also quite tiring, and that's why... Um, it's harder for me to have things outside of placement. And when I get home, I am pretty tired as well. 
yeah, thanks for asking. Um, Simone. No, who asked me? Emmy and yeah, Simona. Thank you. Um, structuring analytical commentaries from user. We'll talk about that in the Englang section. And hello, Socrates. Uh, how did you organize your paragraphs uh, for ACs? Yeah, we'll talk about that when I get to the Englang homework section. And did you do work experience when you were doing VC year 12? So work experience is usually like a short term thing. I didn't do it in year 12. I had a bit of work experience in year 10 in a hospital, um, but you can try work experience. I don't think it would detract from anything. Honestly, with VC, I think unless you have this massive time commitment outside of VC, you shouldn't be too pressed for time. Um, manage an art subject, how to increase writing speed for argument analysis. I'll talk about that in the English section. You guys have a lot of questions, which is good. What are some tips you would give to someone who's trying to get study habit systems? Okay, so I'll talk about all these questions when we get to the sections. Should I get a piece of paper? I'll write some stuff down so I just don't forget. Let me grab a pen. Give me a sec. Okay, so what questions do we have? Uni structuring ACs um, and BP is there. Art subject folio. Writing speed. Argument analysis and tips for study habits. Yeah, so I touch on a lot of these later on as I get to each subject. So, all right, let's just hop into the actual presentation then. So welcome. Um, today we'll be talking about what you should be actually be doing in the holidays in terms of my recommendations and some general approach. And this is the structure for today. So my approach, advice, and then I'll go into some specific subjects. Um, UCAT is a good question as well. Okay. There was one question I wanted to answer. Yeah, the art folio subject, workload. Um, I didn't study an art folio minty, so I don't think I'll be too much help here. But... I think the folio is highly important. So I think you just really want to pace it out, make sure you finish it early, make sure you get a lot of teacher feedback as well and keep that as a pretty high priority because I think from what I remember from my friends, it's worth a bit more, like it's more important than a sack in terms of for the relative to the art um, subject. So pace it out well because it is a project and make sure you have lots of time to receive feedback. Okay, so this is the structure once again and let's... Hop into miscellaneous questions, opinions, and having a part-time job. Okay, I'll answer this one because it doesn't fit in with what else I'll talk about. Um, with a part-time job, I think go for it. It Unless you have a lot of other things going on. Like I, I say, if you have extracurriculars on and all that, I think that's fine. It's when you have too many of them. And you actually need quite a lot, I think, to be completely overwhelmed by year 12. Um, but... If you only have one extracurricular or one part-time job or like one sport you enjoy playing, then I think that's completely fine to maintain throughout BC. It will actually make you maintain your time a lot better because you have limited time, so you're more likely to make use of it. And if you enjoy it, I don't really see why you should quit it either. It's a different situation when it gets to the end of the year and also if you're someone who's really behind on work and gets really behind. In that case, then I think you will need to reconsider and see if maybe you can have some time off as well. All right, so... So uh, quick updates, my last live where I just answered a bunch of questions, the PowerPoint should be structured fairly well. So even though there are a lot of questions, it's structured decently. I did add timestamps, which will make you, it a bit easier for you guys to navigate. And in terms of today's video, here are some of my past videos that will help. Um, as you can see, some of them are directed for the media holidays, which are a bit longer um, as well. Okay. And just a reminder of last week's quote, it's pretty important for the holidays because you probably have a lot of goals in the holidays in terms of like people get very ambitious in the holidays because there's so much time. Um, but you want to make sure that firstly, you get started so you don't leave it till the last week. Don't say to yourself, oh, it's so long so I can leave things later because that's oftentimes not true. Um, and just make sure you, you get started. Whatever you want to do, try and get it done earlier. Uh, from Gregory, what are some tips you would give to someone who's trying to get their study habits? Yeah, yeah, I think someone asked a similar question. I think Vanden asked a similar question. And how did you split UCAT prep? Yep, I'll answer UCAT prep in that as well. I think someone asked that as well. When we get to it a bit later, when my general advice. All right, so 
Holidays, in my opinion, are a double-edged sword. So you have a lot of benefits with being on holidays. You have a lot of shortcomings, right? So benefits, obviously, you have a lot more time. That is very, very crucial. Even though I think that there's a lot of time anyway in VC to achieve whatever score you want, in holidays particularly, you literally have no obligations. More freedom, you don't. You can work whenever you want. So if you work better in the morning, if you work better at night, you can just do that and do whatever you want outside of that. Um, and also you don't have a school. So you just are more energized and you can study whatever you like as well. So more freedom refers to you being able to work on particular tasks that aren't school, that aren't like homework um, because you're not really given day-to-day tasks because you don't have school anymore. But the shortcomings are quite similar to the benefits as well. You have a lot of time. So it can become really, really hard to distribute your time. If I gave you 24 hours to study for like a multiplication test with 10 questions compared with if I gave you 10 minutes, it would actually be a lot easier for you if I gave you 10 minutes because you don't really need to think, you don't really need to plan your time. You just spend all your time studying for it. But because you have so much time, it becomes a lot harder to make sure you get the stuff you want to get done, done, but also have time to enjoy yourself as well. Guilt, I think, is a big one because people feel like they've got to be productive, but it's also holidays, but you also have so much time. So it can become really, really difficult to enjoy your holidays because you're always thinking, I have more homework to do, more studying, I'm a bit behind on this. So it can kind of ruin your your holidays as well. And I was, I think most people are suspect of this as well, but being a perfectionist and having wishful thinking, especially when the holidays come up, some people let themselves get a bit behind in their work because they're like, I have the holidays to catch up, which is pretty normal, pretty normal thought to have. You're like, there's this massive, big chunk of time that I can distribute, attribute, that I can allocate to my studying. And so I just have a a ton of time. Um, And also wishful thinking in terms of that, like, you know, I'm going to complete the whole textbook or I'm going to be so prepared for the end of year exams during these holidays, which is not the best way to think about it because it's not very specific, not very grounded. So those are some of the benefits and shortcomings of the holidays. And finally, I just want to tell you guys to actually enjoy your holidays. Um, I think it's a given. You like, obviously, I want you to enjoy your holidays, but the purpose of this uh, live is not for me to continuously tell you guys to enjoy your holidays. So just keep that in the back of the uh, back of your mind. Make sure you have hobbies and make sure you have activities that you're looking forward to. Uh, but today we'll be focusing a lot of the study aspects. All right. Yeah, and you guys can help each other out as well. So I see Emmy here answering Gregory's question. So if you guys have some advice for other people or you have some strategies that help you guys, please share them with other people. I'm not sure you saw the community post. Oh yeah, UCAT. I'll talk about UCAT when we get to general prep, which is coming soon. Um, And Emmy and Van Dan. Yeah, great. All right, so what's the solution to this? You have quite a lot of shortcomings with the holidays because of also how long it is. So what, what's the solution with this? So first we'll go through some general tips, okay? And I'll talk a bit about your questions first before I get into my tips. So you can have a read of them, but I'll explain them in a bit more detail. So firstly, balancing UCAT, okay? So with UCAT, for me, what happened with me is I sat my UCAT middle of the, of the mid-year holiday. So at Scotch, my school, the holidays are three weeks in the middle of the year. I sat it in week two. That way, I had a week and a half beforehand, which I didn't really want to do too much school homework in or whatever. I wanted to focus on the UCAT. And then I also had a week and a half after that where I could, I was done with the UCAT, I could focus a lot of my sacks because ultimately ATAR is highly important as well. In terms of these holidays, I think you can do a little more UCAT prep than perhaps you would do during school time because you don't have school time, um, but still have the same structures of maybe having a mock exam every weekend and balancing it that way and just training it and just doing a bit of prep on it every day whereas you know for me during school time I wouldn't do as much UCAT prep because you kind of a homework due you have school every day so I, I think ramp up the UCAT prep a little bit but these holidays aren't like that as crucial for me as they were in the media holidays but then again if you're doing poorly on UCAT then it's probably um, good to devote some good time towards it these holidays okay let me just check some of the questions art subjects okay van Den, what are some tips you would give to someone who's trying to get their study habit systems into place like i know what to do but it's just putting a system in place so i can get the work done my biggest piece of advice for putting a system in place is to do one thing at a time 
I think that is literally very, very key for you to achieving anything. If your work habits are not that good at the moment, or you're just not very happy with how you're doing things, and then tomorrow you're like, all right, I'm going to wake up at 7 a.m., I'm going to study for four hours, take a one hour break, have breakfast, study for four hours again. That's just not going to work. It's might work for one day, but you're not going to be very efficient. You're going to be tired. And it's just not the best way to do things in the long term. The best way is to add one block to your study system and make sure you've incorporated that, see the improvement from that, and then add another block. So perhaps for you, it is just, okay, I didn't really have a schedule when I studied in the holidays. So now I'm going to make sure I study an hour each day. I'm going to set aside an hour, maybe 7 to 8 p.m. Or no, or maybe in the morning, 10 to 11 a.m. And that time is going to be my study time. Okay, you do that for a couple of days. Like that's working pretty well. Okay, my next step is that, you know, I want to not have my phone next to me. So let me try putting my phone away when I study. So I think adding a chunk at a time is highly important and really helpful for building a successful study system. So that would be my biggest advice for you. There's probably a lot of things you might want to change, but focus on one thing at a time. Oh, how did you get work experience in year 10 from Dan the Line? I just emailed, did I email the hospital? I think I just emailed the hospital. Yeah, so I did complete my work experience at Austin Hospital. Please message me again later. From memory, I did just email the hospital and asked about work experience. Because usually our school, everyone does work experience in year 10. So it's a pretty normal thing to do. Did you have a job in high school? No. Um, UCAT, what you should be doing, um, like I sort of answered earlier, do a practice exam each weekend. And in the holidays, ramp up a bit of uh, prep in terms of some subtests you're bad at and some practice questions. I answered the... Yep, study habits, I answered that one. Part-time job, how did you split UCAT prep? Yeah, so UCAT prep, the mock exams are most important. The other tests kind of just, just do them as needed. So if you feel like you're bad in a section or you want some time to practice, then go for it. Uh, and I think you guys, Emmy and Vanden, were discussing about procrastinating on your phone. Hmm. So there are two ways I think to navigate this. One, obviously, just don't have your phone next to you. But even I have my phone next to me when I study. I think one advice would also be to not go on your phone when you are halfway through quite a difficult task. Okay, someone asked me a similar question and I thought I thought about it and this was my answer. If you're working on something like a maths question and you haven't solved it yet, don't go take a break on your phone because it's going to be really hard for you to get back into it. In the first place, you weren't able to solve it. So now you have this sort of barrier of going back. It's going to be hard going back. So if you go on your phone, you, you scroll and you enjoy yourself, it's going to be harder going back and studying again. So I think really try and complete whatever task you are on in that moment before taking that break and going on your phone. I think, yeah, calendars are quite useful. Um, you can make to-do lists however you want. You can type them or write them out or in a diary however you want. All right, let's continue. So with my general tips, these are the ones I have. So first, I like doing a bit of work each day. That's for me personally. I don't like kind of having zero days where I don't do anything because I just feel kind of bad. I feel like I just kind of wasted the day away. Secondly, in terms of work, you kind of have, you know, basing it on time. So I'm going to work for an hour or I'm going to base it on tasks. Like I'm going to complete however many questions today. So for tasks, I like to do it by simple tasks. So if I have things that are quite easy to do, for example, like email this teacher or just write this chapter summary, I think of that as my goal. So I'm going to write this ch chapter summary and then I'm going to go chill and do whatever I want. But for longer activities, like perhaps a practice essay or maybe a um, you have a lot of, lot of questions for maths, in that case, I sort of just allocate time. So I'm like, okay, I spent an hour today on the essay. And then as I write it, maybe I, I just finish the plan and I'm like, all right, it's time to move on. It's time to, I, I can do this another day. Um, but for longer tasks, I try not to arrange it by task because I feel like that makes me feel rushed to finish it. Whereas you do have enough time. So for, you know, more difficult, more long tasks, don't stress yourself out by telling yourself you have to finish it. I think just work on it a bit each day and the finish will naturally come. For me also, I enjoyed working in the morning and in the mid-afternoon. I don't really like working at night when you're in the holidays because you just kind of want to enjoy whatever you're doing, go on YouTube, whatever. Um, and morning and mid-afternoon, after the morning, you know, I might go out with, for brunch with my parents and that 
that makes me feel good because I've you know done my work. I go out there, enjoy the sunshine, and have some fruit. The next two points are really important. When you're out working, think about work. When you're out doing whatever you want to do, don't think about work. Okay, there were times where I would sometimes bring my computer with me or bring my textbook with me when we go out for brunch and do some questions. It's just unnecessary. You have so much time in the holidays. I think it's kind of fake work. It it sounds cool because you know I'm working even when I'm when even when I'm out having lunch. But you could just do that later in the day. It's really useless work when you really think about it. I mean, it's unnecessary and it just ruins you know the time that you have with your friends, with your family. So have discreet time for work. Keep it as work. When you go out, when you enjoy yourself, leave all that at home. Okay, even if you think you know I'll just do a couple more questions or I just have a little bit more to finish, leave that for later. And finally, complete your homework early. I think homework especially is really good to complete early. Firstly, you don't have to worry about it when there's a couple days till school starts. You're really prepped for any sort of emergencies that may happen. And also by completing your homework early, you have a lot more freedom with your own study. You feel good. You feel like, all right, I'm pretty primed for the term to start. What else do I want to get done? I feel like homework is just something you want to get done and then move on with whatever. Uh, okay, I'll answer a couple more questions. Van Dan, did I use good notes? I used notability in year 11 and 12, just a little bit. Mainly, I just, I didn't really take notes even in school. I just used like Word document um, and notability a little bit. Taskless calendar. Yep, thanks for sharing, Samuel. Um, Apple Notes usually works. It's called Endless Paper. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. No worries, Tom. Uh, no worries for the live stream. Hello, Z. No worries, Dandelion. Any advice for current year 10? I'm doing methods 1, 2 and Chinese 1, 2 at the moment. So I think year 10, you just want to... Mm-hmm. You just want to be patient and you want to just work work hard and be patient. Don't think too much about what's coming in the future. I think just have good habits. So study well, make sure you're prepped well because whatever preparation you're doing now for your tests is going to be a similar structure as when you're preparing for Saxon year 11. So you really want to refine that structure. So get your work done you know, a couple of days before the, a week maybe before the, um, before the test that's coming up, complete all the practice exams, um, maybe so that they're all done by a day before the test. But just having those little structures in place and executing them uh, will help a lot. And yeah, that, that'll be my main advice there. Um, I think for Chinese particularly, you can build up your sort of vocab a bit um, and your oral skills a bit. It's Chinese takes a bit longer to improve in my opinion. So it's it's good to improve at those idioms and all that now. And with methods, one, two is quite similar to three, four. So make sure you pay attention. Make sure you're, um, you try and do well in that subject. Bound reference, I'll talk about that. Good question. So we did study habits. We did UCAT, bound reference. We did the art subject folio, writing speed for argument analysis. We'll get to that. Bound reference, I'll talk about in the math section. What is the difference in mindset? I'll talk about that a little later as well. Uh, and from Simona, I tend to smash out all of the work from one subject in a few days. Would you recommend doing a bit from each subject each day? Okay, I'll go to the next slide so you guys can have a read. Don't get bored. I just had a couple more points I'll talk about here. Um, But for Simona's question, would I recommend doing a bit from each subject? I think do what works for you. It seems like for you, you really get into a flow with one particular subject for a few days. Like keep that. There's nothing nothing wrong with that at all. Um, For me, I think it just varies a bit. I like doing a significant chunk of one subject, I think, but then also doing a little bit from another subject just for a bit of variety. I didn't really think about that too much. Um, whatever works for you, whatever makes you feel good, go for it. Um, and with medicine, is med school worth it? If you want to become a doctor, you're going to have to go through med school. I think it is worth it. Um, I do know there are a lot of people out there who kind of talk badly about med school and all that. Um, talking about how like, it's easy to get burnt out and all that. But I think it is going to be a bit stressful because the career as a doctor is a pretty tough career. So they need to prep you for it. Uh, but it's definitely worth it. I think it's quite rewarding. The things you learn are really practical, literal people with conditions coming in and you figuring out you know, how to help them or what's going on with them. I think that's a really cool part of med school. And it gets a bit better in the clinical years because you actually see patients and all that as well. And with specialty, I'll just talk this about, I haven't really thought about what specialty yet. 
Um, yeah, so I'm a bit undecided at the moment. I'm pretty open to just trying things in the hospital and seeing what clicks. Um, do you remember content? I'll come back to that question. All right, so my final two points with general tips, don't feel stressed. Like I said, VC is long, your holidays are long. As long as you have a decent plan, you do a bit of work each day, there's no reason really to be stressed. People are stressed because they don't have a plan, because they don't put in work every day. So if you do that, you won't really be stressed. So when you work tomorrow, don't think about your sack in term two. Don't think about your end of your exam. Just think about the work you're completing, do that well, and then do that day in and day out. And in terms of a bit of motivation, if you're in year 12 and you have things you're not happy about or you have habits you want to change, if you don't change it now, there's no, like, when else are you going to change it? So I highly recommend that if you have things you want to do now, if you have things you don't want to regret later on, then get it done now. There's no better time than now, especially in the holidays where you have a lot more freedom. Cool. And my second, this is the main solution part. So these were some general tips, but my main solution is to really set clear goals. So really think about what you want to achieve in these holidays. Okay. So you want to complete all your homework. And I don't mean clear goals like I want to get good at maths. I want to, you know, make sure I ace the next sack. That's not a real goal. Your goal needs to be something you can do. So I want to complete you know, another chapter of the maths textbook that they will be covering next term. Or I want to um, learn, um, you know, 15 more vocab words related to my text. Or perhaps it is, um, I would like to, what else would that be? Yeah, I would like to you know, make sure my bound reference so far, I've collated all my difficult questions and I have it set up pretty well. So if you want to have something really, really specific, something that you can literally work on today, tomorrow, the day after, right? Don't, don't give, don't make your goal something like, I want to be very prepared for my sacks next, next term, because that doesn't really mean anything. Okay. And with exactly how you set out your goal, it depends um, if you like ultra specific ones. So I like kind of general goals. So like, same as what I said before, I would complete two chapters, three chapters, whatever. But by ultra specific plans, some people really like planning out each day. And I wouldn't necessarily do that. Um, but for some people, it works and go for it. And if you're curious, this is what Michael Phelps wrote, I think when he was 12 or something. But swimming is sort of a sport where you need to be very specific about your time. So you write, you know, what time does he want in the 100 butterfly, 100 breaststroke, 500 freestyle. Um, and you see by concentrating, working hard and coming to every practice. So coming to every practice is something specific, something you can do today, tomorrow, the day after. Cool, hopefully that helps out. All right, let's have a look at more questions. How do you remember content throughout the entire year for exams? Bound reference, structuring ACs. We're not at that yet. And argument analysis. Um, remember content, I covered this in my last live, so please go check that out. But a lot of it is trusting yourself. I think if you do the homework, if you pay attention to your teacher, you will naturally remember a lot of the content, but you want to trust yourself. You don't want to think too much about, oh, I might forget this because if you put in the work each day, you will naturally remember it. I think if you focus too much on memorizing, like slamming flashcards into your face, that's not really a good way to learn and it's quite unnecessary as well. But I think if you have things that are really, really specific, go ahead, use flashcards. But in general, if you're, you're doing the practice tests, if you're completing you know, your homework, um, if you're starting exam papers, then you kind of revise the content that way. And if you're doing well on those, then you know you've remembered the content well. You only need to pass, Samuel. Yep, that is is how it is at Mount Ash. So you just need to pass to move on. Um, Syrah, is that how you pronounce your name? Special stack next term, prepare plus bound reference. Yep, I'll talk about that in the math section, which is coming up after English and Englang. Psychiatry in the future? Yes, that's good. It's good that you have a goal like that. And goals are what keep you going, right? No one, no one gets excited because you want to get like you want to get eighty five percent on your next sack. You get excited because you want to study psychiatry. That's good. Um, who are my role models? My role models are probably my parents. I think, not I think, but yeah, my parents. I think for different different areas, I have different role models. So for I guess work ethic and just being good people, I think my parents. Um, I think more specifically for work ethic, you have you know sports people like Michael Jordan, Michael Phelps, Kobe. I think sports is really good for work ethic because every day they train for a certain amount of time, they push themselves, they need to maintain a certain mentality. And for, I guess, innovation and also just hard work, I think people like Elon Musk as well. But yeah, like for, for example, they might not be the best 
um, role models for personal life, but I do like how hard they work. So I want to do psychiatry. Yes, uh, that's good motivation. I didn't actually get my homework. Uh, can you talk about how to make a good battle reference? Yep, I will when we get to the math section. Time consuming, battle reference, battle reference. So many maths questions. Yeah, yeah, maths, you need some things. Uh, what wham do you need? I don't know what wham you need. I think maybe nine around. Yeah, I'm not the best person to answer this. Maybe ask someone in biomed or message me later. I can check with some of my biomed friends for you. Or if someone knows in the chat, please help us out as well. Uh, that was Joe Rod's question about transferring into med from biomed. What wham is required? All right. So let's talk about English and English language. So a lot of things will look familiar to you. If you've seen my videos before, if you've followed along with my channel, things will seem familiar, which I think is a good thing because I have the same advice I had two years ago as I do now because it works and I truly believe in it and it worked for me. Okay. In English, you'll often receive a practice essay in your holidays. Practice essays are top tier tasks. A lot of homework tasks, maybe you think you, you blow them off. You're like, whatever. I spend a little bit of time on them. Maybe the day before school starts. Practice essays, you want to make sure you're really putting in the effort into them. Because what you put out on that page, what you analyze, what contentions you develop are literally the same ones you will be spouting in your sacks and, your new, and, your new, and in your exams. So you really need to make sure that you're paying attention to them. You need to make sure you're looking through the text, looking at possible moments or possible moments, picking out the quotes that you think are the best. Because these, if you've never analyzed a quote in your homework essays, you're not going to be analyzing a quote in the end of your exam. So really make sure you're putting into effort. I really want to emphasize this in your practice essays. The other thing to keep in mind is that you only write a limited number of essays throughout the whole year. I didn't realize this in year 12, but looking back, a lot of my like I don't actually write I didn't actually write that many essays, especially homework essays where I delved into the text. And so you really want to make each one count. You get teachers feedback on your writing, on your ideas, on your analysis. So it's just it's just so so crucial. So please put in effort into your homework essays. And the other tasks, if you like complete your holiday homework, obviously, um, but the other task I would recommend is to evaluate your weak areas. This is more important in the media holidays because usually you guys have only completed the creative sack, which I don't think is on your end of your exam, at least for this year. So that, that doesn't really matter. You probably don't know where your weak areas are yet. Um, but if you've set the argument analysis sack or you know you're not good at argument analysis from last year, begin working on it these holidays. Think about sort of refresh yourself with how to write a good argument analysis, look at good pieces and just work on that before the um, semester starts. And that ties in nicely with the question of how do you improve your writing speed in argument analysis? I think that was the question. I didn't write it out in its entirety. Let me have a look. Okay, I think that was the question. Anyway, uh, so I could write pretty quickly. Just I don't know why, just from a, a young age, I guess. So it wasn't that much of an issue for me. But I think practice is really important. So first, you want to keep your handwriting legible. And then each time you write, you want to make sure it stays legible. So even when you're under pressure, even when you're, um, you're, you're tired, it's like period, it's the last period of the day and you're just taking notes. You want to make sure it, it looks neat because these are the habits you'll be putting in when it's, you know, two hours 30 into your English exam, when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling stressed. And the other one is to practice under time conditions. So practice writing paragraphs under time conditions, try and make them longer, writing intros, writing essays. So a lot of time practice will help you. If you're not naturally a fast writer, then you do need to just put in a lot of time practice and make sure you're handwriting a lot. I would think with notes and stuff, if you normally type them, don't, don't handwrite them because there's no need, but you do want to make sure you're practicing a lot of pressured writing. That's legible as well. And I think that was it with the English questions. Okay. All right. So first rule of fight club for English is read and watch your text. Okay, so these were some tasks I recommend. So your homework essay, your week areas, whatever. But the number one task is to read and watch your text. And it's so important that it's also the second and and third rules of Fight Club. You need to read and watch your text. I think, I think if you're like a high achiever or you're someone who wants to do well, this is pretty normal to you. But if you're someone that kind of needs to be pushed along a bit, that isn't that 
into English as a subject, please do this. This is literally the core basis of your whole curriculum. And as I said earlier, if you don't do it in year 12, if you don't like even read your texts, then then what else are you going to do? Like in the in a very important year, in a very important subject, if you don't do the basics, then I think, yeah, I think it's, it's a difficult thing to excuse yourself from doing. Um, it can be boring, I understand. It can be a bit nah, mundane, but just do it once and do it well. So as I say here, for books, please look out for important info. I don't stress myself out when I read it, especially the first time. When I read it, important stuff, cool quotes, circle, but I'm not thinking too much about themes, about analysis, whatever, because at least my school, we went through it again completely. And also I, yeah, and um, we had a lot of time in, in school to do it. I think if you don't, then maybe look at some analysis online, look at some practice essays and that, but definitely on a first reading, chill out, look out for important info. For movies, making timestamps is really helpful. So this is something I mentioned in some of my English videos, but because movies, they don't, it's hard to remember what scenes are where. I think it's really useful if you just put in timestamps and you can refer to them later on in the year and it's just a lot easier for you to navigate the film. Efficiency is key here. Read them once well, watch them once well. Okay, like I said last week, I didn't read my text a whole lot. I think I read it twice through. I watched the movie once through. But when I did it, I did it properly. And also I revised it a lot, both in class, when I was writing practice essays, and just when I was revising. But I never watched it all through um, again. So when you do it, please make sure you do it well. You won't have to do it again many times. Okay. Let's have a look at more questions. If I missed your question, and please just send it in the chat again. Uh, remembering uh, content throughout the year to the end of your exams, because I feel like I forgot the content after I prepared for the sack. I think, yeah, you, you do need to revise them a bit earlier. It's okay if you leave it a bit. So I think if you start in the mid-year exams, so let's say you had a second term one, I think you don't really have to study it too much. Maybe look at your notes um, a little bit or do some practice exam questions, but focus on your next sack. And when it gets to the mid-year exams for really heavy content subjects like, like um, I guess, chemistry or biology, then I think it's useful to start the practice exams and really revise that content thoroughly. For subjects like maths, I think the skills kind of carry through with the future units, like derivatives. I don't think you'll forget derivatives if you don't do them for a while. So um, that's my opinion of that. Hopefully that helped. Yep, Emmy. Oh, direct entry med. Good luck with that. Uh, with general maths, uh, you don't need methods. How did you remain? How did I remain motivated through year 12? Really good question. So this is from Sarah. If I'm not pronouncing your name right, please let me know. I was pretty motivated because for me, and I've spoken about this before, I felt like I had the potential to do really well. I had good subjects, good school. I was someone who did well in school. So this was like a competition with the whole state and I was pretty excited for it. I was like, this is an opportunity for me to really do well and see how well I can do. So I was pretty motivated. I didn't really get disheartened at all, which looking back was a bit, was like pretty cool. Like when I was in the year, I didn't, I didn't really think about it too much. Uh, but in terms of motivation, I think another good way is to really not think about it too much. So focus on each task you do each day, focus on seeing your friends, on paying attention in class each day. You don't really want to be motivated, but you just want to make sure you're doing the things you want to be doing every day. And then sometimes you'll feel particularly motivated because you aced this test or like um, your friends, it was just lovely seeing your friends after a while. Um, and some days you won't be that motivated, but you still want to make sure you're paying attention in class, you're preparing for your sack, and you have those systems in place. For you to study well. So that's my advice. Motivation, I guess, think about the big picture a bit. So if you have future goals and just draw some motivation from your friends and other and people who do well and success stories, um, but also just make sure your baseline is good as well. Good ways to study for text response. So uh, Simona, my, it's, it's in different sections, right, for English. So first, when you read your text, read it well, highlight important parts. Next, homework essays put a lot of effort into them, receive feedback from your teacher um, and make sure you understand sort of the author's contention, any piece of analysis you're uncertain about, you check with the teacher. And also the biggest piece of advice for any subjective piece of work, such as text response or English, keep on getting teacher's feedback until they're giving you the marks you want. If they're giving you the marks you want, then you know what they want and you can do well. 
Okay, that's literally the secret to doing well in English and subjective tasks is to keep handing in work and changing things and um, taking on criticism until you've reached a standard that you're happy with. I have more specific advice with like particular writing and stuff, but it's a bit harder if I don't know your exact writing. Is not commenting on the second visual necessarily bad? I think you should always uh, comment on visuals because... I think we're running a little... Uh, oh, oh, well. So, with visuals, right? If you think about argument analysis, people might might analyze different quotes or whatever, but everyone sees the visuals. Basically, everyone analyzes the visuals. So, it's pretty obvious if you've missed it, and it's also a good chance to show off your writing as well. So, you should talk about any visuals that are there. Um, textual spot, sax. When writing, practice ACs or essays. Yep. Um, is it type it on Word or write it on paper? So, Word or paper. I'll talk about that in ACs and structuring ACs. I had another question on that. How does being in a strong cohort affect us? I'll talk about that a bit later. Strong cohort. Strong cohort and downtime. All right. And bound reference. We'll talk about that. Cool. So we talked about argument All right, let's move on. So, Ing Lang. All right. My advice for Ing Lang, please check out my videos. I have really, really specific advice for specific sections. So short answer, ACs, essays, please watch them. Um, and I think I recommend you learn the important meta language as well. So you'd be surprised how many people don't know the meta language that well by the end of the year. But I think it's really important that you learn meta language. And I realize it's a bit unrealistic to tell people to learn all the meta language, especially now. So I think it's good you learn the important ones. They're on the next page. I'll point out some of the important ones. And also keep working at areas that you're unhappy about. So some people might have had short answer and essays in term one. If you didn't like how you did in essays because your teacher said your examples were terrible, find new examples. If your short answer ones were bad because you didn't know certain meta language, then search up the meta language and make sure you know it. Okay, so whatever areas you're unhappy about in the past, they're not going to get better by themselves. They're not going to get better by the end of the year magically. So try and revise them and try and fix them now. And this is going to be a big theme for later subjects as well. All right, and with Ing Lang, so I'm not sure if you guys can see this that well, but some of the important meta language, for example, are prosodic features, but that's usually in the key, in the orals, so that's a, all right. Um, phonological patterning is important. Word classes, you should know them. You should be able to identify a noun, verb, auxiliary verb, modal verb, whatever. Morphemes, for example, are not that important. Affixation is not that important. Inflection, derivation, not that important. Uh, lexical patterning, important. You know, syntax, sentence, type, structures are important. Discourse, cohesion, coherence. Discourse actually as a whole is quite important. Conventions for the transcription is not that important. Um, but And code switching is pretty obvious. It doesn't happen that much. Um, but you see coherence, cohesion, spoken discourse, spoken discourse. These are all really important to learn. Semantic fields is good to know. Um, actually, all of semantics is quite useful to know. And other meta language are just... These ones you should actually all know as well. So yeah, that's a, just a brief run through of some of the meta language you should know. Um, learn the important ones first. Okay, so Ying Lang, I had some questions about structuring ACs. So there are two styles. You can structure them by subsystem. So lexicology, semantics, whatever that subsystem approach was, or thematic. Doesn't really matter. Run with whatever works with you. I personally used thematic, and I think I went register. I should not remember. It's been a while. I think I did register, and then function and social purpose. And then whatever third paragraph worked. So it might be cohesion for a formal written text. It might be just you know topic management and relationships if it was a spoken text. So that would be my structure there. So intro, three BPs. I would also like doing a conclusion as well. And the other question about ACs uh, was typed or paper. It depends the purpose. So if you want to... If you want to like spend a lot of time on a piece and it's just for your knowledge and for you to make sure your analysis is sharp, then type it because I think that's easiest to edit, easiest to spend time on and write a bit, come back to it later. But if it's time to practice, obviously just handwrite it. I that, that was basically my approach with it. Yeah, GG if you don't read your text. Like, I think you should read your text. If you're enough, if you're, I guess, attentive enough to come watch a live stream on, on how to prep in the holidays. Hopefully you'd also have enough motivation to read your text. Already finished the textual on SAC. Should I put all my efforts into the upcoming SAC or should I be reviewing section A? 
So it depends, Matthew. How did you go in section A? Let's go back to English. So this question from Matthew, I've already finished the text response sacks. Should I put all my efforts into my upcoming sacks or should I be reviewing section A? So review it if you didn't think you did that well and you want to improve and maybe write one other piece to give back to your teacher. But you should be mainly focusing on your future sacks because they're equally important and they're the ones that are going to be assessed a bit earlier. I think just kind of keep in the back of your mind what went wrong if you didn't do that well, but really focus on your future sacks. Would it be beneficial to reread your text? So generally no, because when you think about it, if you've read it already and you're using it for your essays and stuff, you kind of know the important moments. So what's the point of rereading the text as a whole? I think you can do it sporadically if you just want to make sure you haven't missed any any points. Um, but just in general, like just reading it from front to back, if you think about it, you're not really gaining too much out of it. You're sort of just looking for some small pieces of analysis you might be able to incorporate, but not that useful as a whole. Um, is 28 out of 30 for the first act good for 45 plus? I coincidentally got 28 out of 30 and I scored a 50. So it is good. Uh, depends on your score though, like how they set it out. But 28 out of 30 is a solid score for any study score you want. But, you know, it could mean you get a 35. It could also mean you get a 50. It just depends on what you do from here. Strong cohort. Okay, let's go back to Inglang just because I feel like it. So these are some of my Inglang videos if you would like to check them out. This video was a massive one to make, the hour one. People sent in their ACs and I and I corrected them. That was quite a quite an experience. Okay, so the question from Boondogood. How does being in a strong cohort affect us? I don't... I think it lifts you up, whatever. That's the general consensus. consensus. I know I was pretty fortunate to be in a good school, but I also think that you don't really need to think about that. Because it doesn't really affect you. Right? You put in the work, you do your best in the sack, you get the score, you get the score that you get. I think thinking about cohorts or like averages and stuff doesn't it's not that helpful because it doesn't have much to do with you. Uh possible ranking issues. I don't like why would there be ranking oh you mean like if you're a smart student but you're not ranked that highly because of a strong cohort? I don't think that's too big of an issue. Um yeah, I think strong cohorts will do well as a whole. Hi Darren, in normal days at school, do you have downtime every day? Yeah, I have downtime every day. There was never a day where I studied, like I didn't do anything except study. I don't think that ever happened. And I don't think you should do that. Like, you know, you enjoy your meal, you go on your phone, you watch some YouTube. I think that's perfectly normal. Uh, smash the practice essay then. Oh, so Emmy, what happened? I might've missed some of your comments. So you didn't do it as well in your first sack as you wanted to. Um, Socrates, where would you find contemporary media examples? Okay, let's go back to Inglay. Actually, yeah, I forgot to mention. I mentioned this in my last live, but yes, you can definitely start looking for essays, essay examples. Yep, yeah, meta language examples. I don't know what to collect from where. All right, this is very, very important. If you're studying Inglay, please pay attention. Here is where you look for your examples. If you are looking for easy ones, like jargon, like slang, like what else? Like teen speak. I think you can just reflect on your own life. Okay. Think about terms you use. Think about terms, you know, doctors may use or engineers may use. And you can either just use those just generally, or you can just search them up in the internet and then go to news. So search up like, I don't know what slang people are using these days, but you can just search that up and then go to news. And there's probably quotes of people using them. And that would give you a dated example. So an example with a date, an article, whatever. You can do that. Okay. For slightly harder ones, for example, like double speak or like euphemisms, think about an event where people might use them. This makes it a little harder. So for euphemisms, right? Usually they use it after... One classic euphemism is after people have died. People will use a lot of euphemisms. So I think... I think a cricketer died, right, like last year, I think. So I searched up whoever it was, death, and then I went to like tweets, and then I went to the news, and then I had a look at the language people used for that person. So think about areas where you might see that made a language and then search that up. It's a, it's a little bit of thinking. And for example, in Aussie English, I searched up comedians, so Aussie comedians, and had a look on YouTube as well. So think about where they might occur. Finding examples will take time, especially for the really hard ones. So for example, I think dysphemism was really hard for me to find and doublespeak 
was hard for me to find as well. You, the examples you find now are literally the ones you could be using on your exam. So it is worth putting effort into. I do understand it takes a lot of time and effort, which is a bit tiring, but also keep your ear open for any examples you hear on the radio or whatever, and just make sure to note them down. So that's the secret with essays. Hopefully that helped you guys out. Oh, right, Leonard, great question. Um, making videos and live stream. I might answer that towards the end. Make videos, live stream. Cool. Got any ideas for social purposes? Uh, register cohesion, coherence. I don't find it hard to talk about. Social purpose, I can't find any meta language to write for. All right. Social purpose. Social purpose, like if you think about it, it's people's agendas, right? So semantics is quite important. Connotations I used a lot for social purpose. Um, you also might have things like diminutives or or shortenings or colloquialisms if they're trying to get friendly with someone. Um, they might use some uh, some politeness markers like please if you're trying to please someone. Um, but yeah, connotations are really going to be your best friend here. Almost every piece has connotations, particularly because they're trying to paint things in a certain way. They're trying to paint it in a negative light, in a positive light. So connotations will be quite helpful. underperforming cohort then probably drag you down a little bit but once again like you can't really control everyone else so if you do really well you try your best and everyone else underperforms and so you do a little poorer than you would have liked then that's kind of oh well good study timetable good question stacy good study timetable i'll come back to that one how ranking works uh my says collect better languages Okay, Shane, uh, yeah, Shane Warren was the person with ranking. How ranking works, I'm not too sure, honestly. There's a good video on it, I think, on YouTube. I will share it, I think I share it in the community post of my YouTube, if I can find it. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. I think it's something to do with your exam. Whatever your ranking is, you get the score of that. So if your ranking is rank two, you get the second highest exam mark in addition to your SAC mark even if you didn't get the second highest exam mark. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, I'll try and find a better explanation. All right, I think we'll skip this question. Have a think about this. I asked you guys this last week. So think about whether you've actually changed anything with your routine or what you plan to change in these holidays. Okay, methods and special. So first, I'll answer some of your questions. Bound reference, how you should be doing it. At the moment, I think just collate some of your, just collate all your difficult questions and make sure it looks neat and make sure it's succinct. So when you look at it, it's not all messy. It's not a bunch of working out. It's kind of clear what you learned from the question and um, what you what you got wrong in the question as well. You can also write down some CAS shortcuts as well if you find them, if you find some of them a bit difficult. Were there any other maths questions? I think I had another one in the comments. Okay, no, I didn't have one in the comments. And I'll just answer English quickly. Someone asked me what SAC scores I got. So for English, I scored a 28 out of 30 for creative. I scored a 29 out of 30 for my text response. And then I got I got full marks for all the other SACs. And with the exam, I scored 20 out of 20, 20 out of 20, and then 17 out of 20 for my section C. Which, yeah, the person marking it has some questions they need to answer. But just the way it is. All right, so with my advice for methods and spec, complete your co homework questions. So this and chem, which I'll mention later, are really important for you to complete your homework questions. More important than some other subjects. Um, the other advice is to complete more questions from areas that you lost marks in. So if you've had a stack already and you really, you, you just made dumb mistakes in derivatives or you mistook product rule for quotient rule or whatever, do more of those questions so that you're more confident with them. Like I said earlier, Mistakes you have now, uh, misunderstandings you have now, won't fix themselves naturally by the end of your exam. You need to consciously make a change. Okay, and continue building upon your error book. We talked about that a bit with the bound reference. If you want to do well, um, I think work slightly and solidly ahead of the curriculum. So get a bit of a head start on what the next topic is, just so when it comes around, you're a bit more fluent with the basics of anti-diff. So you don't need to spend time getting quick at anti-diff because you're already good at it. And then it's just a matter of the problem-solving aspect. 
I mean, some people I feel like would just ask me about practice exams. So I started practice exams for maths in sort of mid, um, end of mid, no, mid of July. So that's just a, a note for you guys. All right, let's have a look. Any other questions? Did you experience the critical period after 16? You find it hard to learn a language for life. No, no, I, I didn't. Um, yeah. I think kids learn languages really well, but as long as you're not like under five, I feel like you shouldn't think too much about you learning languages. Just try and do your best for it. I found it fine to learn Latin as long as I put in the effort and had good strategies about it. Okay, Emmy, good question. Hardest part about year 12? What do you do in that awkward gap between exams and results? Okay, what did I, what was the hardest part about year 12? Let me switch my screen so it looks a bit cooler. All right, so what did I, what was the hardest part of year 12? Huh. Probably. I think probably when I did badly in an exam. So I didn't do that well in my maths exams in year 12. Recovering after that, I would say was pretty hard. Like I would be sleeping and I would be thinking about the maths exam. I'll be you know, waking up and I'm not sure if I've woken up and I'll still be thinking about how I messed up that question. Particularly because they released the answers for the maths exams as well. So you kind of know what you did wrong. And I was just upset with myself. Like I knew I had still had a good chance to get a high ATAR or whatever, but it's still annoying when you get questions wrong. Um, I guess another hard part would be distributing your time well but i had covid in 2020 so we kind of were in lockdown so it was a pretty straightforward answer to how you should distribute your time and what did i do in the awkward gap, gap between exams and results it's not that awkward as you might realize you'll be a little nervous but you're literally free so you just do whatever you want um, go out with your friends go out with your family indulge in some of your pastimes and start whatever projects you would like to start as well uh, what is an error book? It's just a book with all your errors. So maths questions that you thought you learned something from or you, yeah, you learned something from, you can collate them and that would be an error book. Do you have tutors? No. Uh, no for, so this is from Scarlett. Oh, Scarlett. Hello. Oh, whoops. I just read your name as a normal username. But yeah, nice to see you, Scarlett. Did you have tutors for all my subjects? So I had a tutor for Spesh. What else? Did I have a tutor for anything else? No, I, no I, th I think I had another one. Okay, at the moment, all I remember is Spesh. I didn't have one for English. I had one for a couple weeks for Latin just to help me out with some fine tuning, um, but not for any of the other subjects. But in year 11, I did for methods and Spesh and, and, and Chinese. But I, I actually did better in the subject I didn't get a tutor in, which is a bit interesting. And like I said last week, trust yourself more than the tutor. Do I have tutors? Yep, Dan. Similar question. How do you get better at proofs? Okay, other people will be better um, answering this because I haven't tutored Spesh after year 12. But I think practice and... Yeah, I think proofs is probably practice. And just trying things out. I think I remember my Spesh tutor was telling me that he doesn't really know the answer when he starts the question. Like, you're not always going to be able to start the working out and know what the end result is. You kind of just want to do the next step, what seems like the next step, simplify things and then get to the end. And also, I remember his advice was to start from one side and try and get it into a form that looks like the other side. So continually reviewing your steps until it looks more similar to the other side. Um, but also, yeah, just taking the next step without thinking too much about it. Uh, better at proofs, error books. Do you note down trends and mistakes? Yes, yes, trends are really, really good, Samuel. Um, redo logbook. I didn't redo any logbook questions. I think some people did that. It might be helpful, but yeah, for error books, it's really good to note down um, trends as well. So it's not just, I got this wrong, but why did I get this wrong? And similar questions that I got wrong as well. All right, let's head back to the PowerPoint. Do you ask your probability questions in the methods practice exams? Or were you ahead on probability? If you haven't studied it, skip it. I think in, yeah, in July, I, I did have to skip it until I covered it in a bit more depth. Did you say you are mentally and emotionally very strong? <laughs> I will answer that a little later as well. So mentally strong. I think I'm more mentally strong. I think it was different in year 12. 
Okay, we'll talk a bit about, we have a couple more subjects to go and then I'll answer a lot more of your questions, all right? So chemistry, what should you be doing in chemistry? So chemistry, completing homework and qu questions, very, very important, okay? As I mentioned at the bottom of this slide here, your topic tests and your textbook questions are really, really useful in chem because they're not dumb questions that you just repeat a hundred times and it's like multiplication. They're thoughtful questions that are very similar to your exams. Checkpoints in particular is very good. If I went back and did chem again, I would start checkpoints earlier. I would complete all of checkpoints. I'll review the answers at the end of checkpoints. They are really, really helpful, really similar to the end of your exam. And the questions in chem, I think are similar each year but also they require you to think. So if you've done that similar line of thinking before, you've worked through similar questions, it will be easier for you. But you do, do need to do it. Um, as always, consolidate your weak points. So if you've had a sack already, or if you know there are things you, you, don't, you need to memorize, but you haven't yet, like fuels or whatever, do that. Also work ahead, especially if you take longer to understand the material. So if you're someone that needs to do a lot more practice or needs to watch a lot, lot of YouTube videos, do a lot of practice questions before you understand something, then start that process in the holidays. But yes, as I mentioned, your practice questions are really, really useful. Your topic tests for TSSM, textbook questions in the Heinemann textbook, checkpoints are very, very good. And I think the work you put in is very directly the work you get out as well for chemistry. Because I think if you put in time to memorize, if you put in time to learn the maths equations, to do practice questions, get them right, understand them, then when you get to the actual exam, it's rarely different to your to your um, normal exam, which is may not be the case for some other subjects. Just keep that in mind for chem. All right, any chem questions? Use the holidays to get ahead of school. So yeah, I just mainly for maths, I just worked ahead a bit. And I just read, I, I think for English, I didn't even work that much ahead. I just read the text. Um, but mainly for maths, I did um, complete more questions. What separates a 99 from 95? Good question. Do you need to know the kinetic molecular? I think, I remember hearing that. Is that a molecular, molecular theory? Like, there's like three principles or whatever. I don't think they... Mm, there might be one question on them in MCQ, but I think you should know them because they're quite fundamental to chemistry. What separates a 99 from a 95? Look, honestly, I think 99 to 95 is quite a big difference. If you think about the, their like raw study scores or scaled study scores. But I will answer that in a little later as well. Um, tutoring for chemistry? No, I didn't have tutoring for chemistry. Okay, let me just rewrite my question. So 95 to 99, that was a question. Why I make videos is a question. Being mentally strong or how I motivate myself. There's another question. I answer strong for a whole. Yeah. All right. We'll get to that at the end, I think. Some of those more general and more personal questions. Uh, Samuel, good chem question. Did I study differently for different topics in chemistry? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that is the secret to a lot of things. You don't study one way. You don't use flashcards for every single thing you learn. In chem, uh, for, yep, content-heavy topics and doing VCAR uh, questions. VCAR questions are just the best for anything. But I think if you try to remember some, like, formulas or I don't remember what else I had to memorize I think fuels there was a lot a bit to memorize about what fuels are better or whatever that you might need to use flashcards you might need to just you know write out a table and just keep copying out that table without looking at it until you've got it in your head whereas for you know thermochemistry equations I think just doing a wide variety of questions is useful and also thinking about it so thinking about flipping the equation thinking about changing coefficients multiplying by five that's quite useful so yeah, just being very flexible in your approach. Um, best practice exams for chemistry. I think they were all quite good, actually. TSSM and NEEP were, were the main ones our school used, and they were quite good. And there was another company, isn't there? What's the company that produces chem exams? Do you guys remember? I remember it's one that doesn't do it for other subjects. It had a really... It has like a black bar on it. Yeah, I don't remember the name. If you remember it, please pop it in the chat. Uh, where do you find the... TSSM topic test. Our school gave it to us. Do you know, need to know about fuels as in the exact definitions? From memory, I think you do need to be able to compare fuels quite well and just know them. Uh, know them. Yeah, I, I forgot how much detail you need to, know, uh, need to know them though. How do you rate Monash Uni? I am actually in hospital every day now, so I don't see the uni too much. 
But Monash Uni, I think, is a really nice campus. Even people from Melbourne who've come to Monash, I think they've really liked it. But I, I think it's a really pretty place. Best way to memorize fuels in camp ADV. Is that like an a uh, like initialism or to remember it? Have I been watching Villain Saga? I haven't watched or read it, but I've seen a lot of clips of it around and it looks pretty cool. So maybe something I can do later. All right, let's continue. Chinese SL, so very niche audience. What should you be doing? Memorize your oral, okay? Any, actually any language, please memorize your oral or at least write your, try and memorize your your general conversation and finish writing your detailed study, especially if you want to do well on the end of your exam. The oral is a massive pain in the butt. This is how I looked when I memorized it, especially the detailed study where you have a lot of complex terms where it is hard. So try and get that done in the holidays where you can be drained. It's fine if you're just really tired and you just want to sleep in the next day. So try and get that done when you have a lot of time. So yes, apart from that, I think work on some of the general long-term skills. So someone was talking about Chinese 1, 2 earlier on. A lot of languages, I think, is skills. So you're reading comprehension, listening, writing. It takes time. If you do 100 listening tasks today, you won't be much better. But if you do one every two days for a month, you'll get a lot better. And also study some vocab lists. So I used Quizlet for my vocab lists. Great. All right. Let's have a look at some other questions. Best way to study for chem, special and English? That's a very broad question. It just it just varies. So English, I sort of went through it earlier. Paying attention in your homework essays, getting feedback consistently. Spesh, lots of practice questions, making sure you, you know why you're doing each step. So not just doing each step because that's what the example question did, but actually asking yourself, what does this step do? And for chem, making sure you memorize some things, but doing a lot of practice questions and making sure you understand each step in chem as well and looking at the practice answers. That was a very brief summary of how to study for all three subjects. You can go in a lot more depth on my channel and I've spoken about earlier on. When did you finish memorizing your orals? So I finished memorizing my Chinese oral. My Chinese, I don't know why I said Chinese. I only There's only an oral for Chinese. My general conversation in the term one holidays. I think, yeah. And my detailed study, I think in the mid-year holidays. I think that's how it went. Best resources. I didn't use any resources for studying SL. Um, Chinese school helped a lot. Um, tutors, the school provided some info as well. But I'm, I don't know too many good resources, unfortunately. If anyone does know, please pop it in the chat. How do you think I can deal with an English teacher that is kind of bad? Okay. That is a fairly common concern. Let's go back to English. We only have one subject left, which is Latin. So I'll leave that for a little bit. I'll answer a couple of questions. So how do you deal with a, question, a teacher that's bad? You have to come up with ideas yourself. It's kind of hard. You can't really go to other teachers because it's kind of going behind their back. I would advise you to work with other students, to look online for resources, to look at YouTube videos, look at um, some of the, you know, those companies or those websites that make a lot of English analysis. Look at those as well and look at past exams. And it might even be useful for you to try and find or purchase some some exams, some essays from people who have done well with your texts. Also, there are things called critical readings where people who have analyzed these texts have written. So particularly for like Greek plays and all that, you have people who, who analyze it properly and you can read those as well. So hopefully that helps out. And yeah, it's unfortunate to hear that your teacher is not the best. What was your English persuasive oral on? We didn't have an oral because it was COVID and the, the study design was changed. What we had was we had to answer a bunch of questions on like a on like a persuasive piece. So we had to design a persuasive piece. It was a bit of an odd task. Did you drown yourself? So let's go back to Chinese. Did I drown myself in Chinese orals and TV shows? For me, I think that's a long-term thing to do. So if you're like if you're like eight years old, you can watch a bunch of TV shows and your Chinese will get better by the time you're in year 12. But I think that yeah, in year 12, it's probably not, or year 11, when you're doing 3-4, you can watch a little bit, but it, the amount you gain from it is going to be very little. You learn a couple of new phrases and that. Actually, I think if you're not a native Chinese speaker, it might be a bit different. Yeah, if you're not a native Chinese speaker, maybe watch the TV shows, because I think you'll get a feel for the accent. But for me, I speak Chinese at home, 
So if I'm watching the TV shows, it's like for me to learn a couple new phrases or whatever, which isn't that helpful. But for the accent, for the culture, and you're not a um, person from a Chinese background, then actually the TV shows would be quite useful. Do you do the Asian Culture Fest? Where did that question? At Monash last year. I think I did. Was it like an outdoor event with some food and things like that? I think I might have been there. What's a good way to learn orals? Okay, we're well, going back to English. And thanks for staying around, guys, as well. And yeah, okay. Orals for English. Learning them, I think, just have a structure with the way you write it. I think that will make it much easier for you to perform it. So if you remember, like I'm introducing the issue and then I'm you know, talking about the issue and then I'm providing a rebuttal and then I'm providing solutions and then I'm you know, summarizing with a call to action. If you kind of have a structure in your head, I think that's a much better way to learn it. Also, um, yeah, you can clarify what you mean by learning it. Do you mean like memorizing it to perform or do you mean actually writing it? Yeah, the text you're studying is brand new. It might not be any VC resources, but usually texts do have analysis on them. What text is it, please? Feel free to... Oh, Born a Crime. Oh, is that by Trevor Noah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure people would analyze it. That's a pretty famous novel. Um, Four Languages, uh, TED Talks. How long after studying an English text do you start essays and timed essays? I just did it when my teacher told me to. So I think we went through it in class, a teacher would set a body paragraph first often and then set a, set a, um, what do you call it? An essay later. So I didn't really start it intentionally myself. It was when my teacher said it. But once again, Scotch is pretty organized. So if you feel like you have a decent grasp on the text, you kind of know what you've read it through once, then I guess you can start writing a paragraph and see how you go. Yeah, passion and features is important. Good. Good. Yeah, help each other out. So find out what the text is. See if you can help um, each other out. Is it better to buy the 2023 Checkpoints book? Uh, I don't think it matters. Yeah, probably. I mean, if you're not very hell-bent on saving $5, I mean, there's not going to be much of a price difference, I think. So I think just get the newest one. Uh, how's uni? Uni is good. I am currently in hospital placement. So it's pretty... So I'm a bit far removed from uni. Um, I'm going to the hospital each day, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's very practical application of medicine and you're with doctors. So I've said this to other people, to my parents mainly as well. It's like, imagine you're playing basketball and you get to train with like an NBA team or Michael Jordan every day. You'd be pretty happy. You'd be pretty, I'm excited to go in. And that's a little bit of how I feel right now because each time I go in, there are doctors who know so much, who are experts at what they do, who have so much you know, confidence and skill with what they do. And I see them each day. And that that's also what I'm studying. I think that helps me study well as well. JL Tutoring, Julian, hello, welcome. Uh, Julian has a YouTube channel as well. I think he's in the US at the moment. And he does cover some good VC tips. So feel free to check that out. Uh, what about for Lot? Oh, how to memorize your orals for load. Yeah, that's just practice. Um, write it well and then just practice. It's, it's annoying. It's hard. Nothing beats good old practice. Someone asks the question, you answer it with no prompt, with no um, notes. So we'll go to languages, actually. So this is from Simona, who's asking, how do I memorize my oral? This is from Simona. How do I memorize my oral? So you memorize it by, by practicing it a lot and putting yourself in high stress situations as well. So if you, um, so I remember for me, one of the first times I practiced my detailed study was at a parent teacher interview in front of all the parents, all the students, and the teacher quizzed me on it. And I was very, very nervous for that, but that helped me in the long term. So keep that, um, so stressful situations and lots and lots of practice. How often do someone study for methods? Let's go to methods. So how off, often is in the question? It's how good you get with it. So if you if you become quite skillful with it and you are... So if you're quite skillful with the basics and you're happy with how you're doing on practice exams. So until you get to that stage, keep working. So I wouldn't say there's a certain time that you should spend on it. 
Uh, if you had to redo VC, what would you do differently? I think my mentality would be different. You know, I, I honestly think that I could have done with... I think there were a lot of things I didn't understand when I went through VC as well. But I still ended up doing well, I think, because I was just like decent at the subjects I studied and I had good subjects. The main thing I would redo thinking back is I would have worked harder for my chem exam. So after my, I forgot what was my second last one, but whatever, whenever that was done, I should have maintained focus and just gotten the job done with chem as well before sort of letting my mind relax. That's probably one thing, one big thing I would change. Yeah, no worries. Good to see you guys watch JL, Julian as well. No worries at all from Dandelion. Um, Emmy, yeah, English oral. English oral, yeah, I guess practice performing it and putting yourself in stressful situations because I, I think a lot of people may not be as used to it. So I did public speaking a lot, but if you don't do public speaking, you don't do debating, then it's probably a bit easy to get nervous. So yeah, just make sure you practice it so you feel pretty confident. Um, which premier award would you want the most? Probably English. Just any premier award for, I think, English or Latin. I think if I, if I received a premier award for those, I would have been pretty happy. All right, let's finish chem. Uh, let's finish Latin. How about that? Hello, Wimley. Let's finish Latin. We'll answer some questions. Okay, so Latin. Does anyone study Latin here, by the way? Please pop a, let's say, what should you write? Let's pop, pop a salve. Yeah, put, pop a salve in the chat if you guys study Latin. I'd be curious to see if anyone does study it and is in the live right now. But yeah, stay tuned as well. I'll be answering questions at the end. So if you don't study Latin, I guess you can enjoy a bit of Latin teaching. So Latin, what did I do in the holidays? Unseens, okay? Unseens are really important. That is maybe your next sack as well. But unseens are something that take time to improve and they take time to work on as well. So holidays are a good time for you to do a couple unseens a week instead of maybe one. Grammar and vocab. Oh, nice. Nice to see you guys. So grammar and vocab, please check out my last live in my Latin videos. But I have two questions for you guys. Who the all oh, four of you, big cohort who are studying Latin. Firstly, what is more important? Do you think grammar is more important or vocab? And secondly, what are the three steps to solving an unseen? Please drop it in the chat. I'll wait a bit. And I hope you like the meme. I thought it was pretty funny when I read it. I had a bit of a scoff. Yeah, went with philosophy. That's a fine choice. As long as you enjoy what you're studying. All right, those two questions. Come on, Latin guys. I don't really care if you get it wrong. What do you think is more important? Grammar or vocab? And what are the three steps to solving an unseen? Oh, you can't see the meme. Okay, I'll move my face out of the way. Grammar, yeah, good, good, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm asking you guys again, because I want to see if you remember it. Lorem Ipsum, isn't that the, the font thing in the PowerPoint? Okay. So, grammar, yes, grammar is more important. Vocab helps, but grammar is literally the fundamentals to solving unseen. And what are the three steps to solving an unseen? One, you try and do it left to right, okay? You try and do it straight away. Two, you break it into some obvious phrases, try and solve each phrase and then piece together. Three, if it's insanely hard, you literally can't make head or toe of it, rely on your grammatical knowledge, look at the endings, put things that could possibly go together together. It's like a really, really hard jigsaw and you just got to just see, does this go with this or this or this or this? It takes time, um, but there will be like, you know, maybe one sentence that's kind of like that. But if you've done it before, you have good grammatical knowledge, then you can do the best you can in that situation. So I want to translate the meme. Uh, if you guys study a language, then you probably know that verbs conjugate. So they have certain endings like, uh, I forgot what it is for German, but maybe it goes, you know, first person is O, second person is S third person is T, whatever. So that is one of the endings for one of the uh, one of the tenses in Latin. 
And in Latin, you recited a lot, the endings. Like, bam, bas, bat, bamus, batis, bat. So, that's the joke there. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. Actually, yeah, that's both an ending and the verb itself. Cool, good. All right, I'll move my face back. Whoops. All right. So we've reached our second last slide. And these are the key themes from today. I'll answer some of your questions. Firstly, complete your homework early. Okay. You want to spend, if you want to spend time on the things you want to do, then you complete your homework early. So then you have no real obligations. Everything you do is just a plus. I'll just charge my computer now. Next, consolidate your weaknesses and catch up on work. So if there are things you did badly on in your first term that you're not happy about, do it now because it's not going to get better by itself. And also there's no better time than the holidays. And also like you're in year 12 or you're in VC. So it's, it's time to really step up. Work on individualized tasks. So think about like, don't just do what everyone else does. So if everyone else does a hundred maths questions, homework questions, because they're for homework and you do a hundred homework questions, you've not really worked on yourself. So maybe you're bad at derivatives, but they're evenly distributed across all the topics. So work more on the derivatives, right? Make sure you're using your brain when you work. Think about what works best for you. Follow, trust yourself. So if your vocab is a lot behind, my vocab was always a lot worse than the other people in my Latin class, particularly the people who are doing really well. So towards the end of the year for year 12, I really worked on my vocab. So be smart about it and set rigid boundaries, maintain good habits when studying. These are the holidays, right? Enjoy yourself. You should spend more than half of the time enjoying yourself and having fun, okay? And you should also have a bit of time of studying, maybe every day, maybe every second day, but discrete time where you get solid work done that is individualized plus, you know, homework that you have to do. Um, and that doesn't bleed into your enjoyment and your time with family and friends. That's really important. All right, I get that up. Let's answer some of the questions that you guys have. Hayden, hello, here from Archie Newton's channel. Welcome. Uh... I just did my Latin unseen sack. Have my seen text next. Okay, so with the seen text for Latin, let's go back. Seen text for Latin, this is from Wonk, is all hard work. It's all just putting in work. Okay, comprehension and grammar is not hard because you know it beforehand. They've literally given you the lines. If you know who every single person is in those lines, then you're not going to mess up in the exam. So I think it's a lot of effort. So as long as you prepare well, prepare thoroughly, Sure, there might be some obscure character that you don't explain in enough detail or some grammar that you're just not able to understand on the spot. But if you put in a lot of the effort, a lot of the marks will come back as well. So just put in the effort with your scene text and memorize it as well. Please memorize your scene text. That is the fundamental in Latin. Um, Charles, do you think other teachers who know me would be willing to... Yeah, I think some teachers are a bit iffy about that. I probably wouldn't do that just because it might kind of makes it a bit complicated all the relationships and stuff i think if it's like if it's if it naturally occurs so one of the teachers is you know taking you as a sub or whatever then i think that's quite natural or maybe they're your like homeroom teacher um, but i think going out of your way to show your work to a different teacher is sort of yeah makes the whole situation a bit complicated uh Syrah, what's the lowest mark i got for all your subjects Oh, I don't remember. So maths, I'll probably losing six six marks. Maybe was the worst I got for sax. Yeah, for sax, and for chem, I think I might have lost nine marks, and that was the lowest. For English and Latin, it was like losing two for English and losing one for Latin in the sax. If you could do another VC subject, which one would I choose? Uh, good question. I might choose a language. I quite like languages. Or maybe like literature, perhaps quite like the Englishes. Or maybe even ancient history. Yeah, I think those subjects are all pretty cool. A lot of cool subjects. Time to start homework. Yeah, uh, it's 10 p.m. Like I said, you have plenty of time. I don't think you need to start homework tonight, unless you feel motivated and you want to get something quick and easy done. Then go for it. You're literally behind 15 lectures. <laughs> yeah, um, Hayden. Just focus on yeah i think you're on mid-semester break now for uni so i guess plan it out so you at least get a couple of those lectures done i'm memorizing a bit of the scene every day excellent excellent to hear 
that's how you do the scene. You study it, you memorize it pretty soon afterwards, and you do a bit, you know, either each day or, or every couple of days. Would I choose physics? Not really. I don't think physics is my, like, it's just not a subject that appeals to me that much. I guess the math side, and it's a very theoretical, and I like writing more as well. Did I pick your subjects because of the scaling? Really good question. I did not pick my subjects because of the scaling. A lot of my subjects came naturally, right? So English came very naturally. Methods and spech came naturally, just because if you're good at maths at Scotch, usually you study methods and spech. Uh, what else? Chem, I needed for, for, um, for medicine. Ing Lang, I picked up in year 12 because I needed to pick up another subject and Ing Lang doesn't scale. Latin, I feel like, and Chinese are the main ones you might be talking about. Chinese, I am Chinese. So, and it does scale decently, but like for a Chinese person who's decent at Chinese, you usually study Chinese second language. So that was a pretty natural choice. Latin, my dad had a bit of research into it. He found that a lot of the top scorers at Scotch did well in Latin. And also Latin is very well run at Scotch as well. And when I started, I really liked it. So I guess that's partly scaling, but partly just like I had a good, uh, the, the school had a good culture of Latin as well. And I enjoyed it. So it's a lot of factors together. All right, let's answer some of the other questions from a bit earlier. So someone was asking me the difference between a 95 and a 99 ATAR. I think that's a pretty big difference. I think the difference between a 99.5 like and 99.95 is, is quite huge as well. But yeah, between 95 and 99, it's a lot of things. It's maybe, I think just from the beginning of the year, they might be in kind of different brackets. So one might be, um, you know, close to the ducks of the year level, whereas the other is kind of someone who's like you know, kind of good at the subjects, um, but not really scoring extremely high marks. And also maybe the subjects might be different, but that doesn't make that much of a difference between 95 and 99. Scaling won't help for ATAR points. But I also think hard work is really, really useful as well. So two students who are similar at the start of the year, one can get a 95, one can get a 99, just through hard work, just through consistent work as well. But there is a big gap between those two scores. Okay, big gap, in, in not in a negative way, just in like a objective, like if you look at the, the scaled scores, I think there is a big difference between 95 and 99. All right, another question that was asked was why... I make YouTube videos and lives. I started it in the year 12 holidays in January. So once I received my ATAR, January was my first video. I think I just thought YouTube was cool. And that was around the time people like Ali Abdal were making videos as well. And I thought it was quite nice. And I was like, look, I'll just make a YouTube. I'll make a one on VC um, because I did well and it's the holidays. And I think it'd be cool to have a YouTube channel. So I just made one and then it just grew from there. I think I was extremely motivated, particularly in the first year, because I had a lot I wanted to share with you guys. So if you look at my videos, a lot of them were made in my first year of making videos. And they are things like, you know, looking at my past essays or my advice for Ing Lang or um, what else was there? Or like language orals. There were a lot of things I wanted to share with you guys that I had in my mind that I had applied to myself in year 12. And I also found that if you search on YouTube, there's not much out there for VCE, at least when I first started YouTube. So like Latin Unseens, if you search up Latin Unseens, I don't think you'll find many resources there. So I hope my resource can help you guys out as well. So that's one of those reasons. Uh, and for lives, I really like interacting with you guys. I feel like, um, yeah, I, I like interacting with you guys and it's just enjoyable. Yeah, it's just an enjoyable experience. And once again, yeah, sharing sort of things that I found helpful. And it's sort of a different uh, different approach to teachers as well. So it is content, but also like, I remember messaging people who scored highly, like, you know, how do I study for my exams after my sacks are done? Because we had a, a couple of weeks of like no school. And I was like, how do I manage my time? So I would message people that. So those sort of things I like to pass down as well. Okay, did I have any responsibilities to balance a school vice captain? Oh, Scarlett. I was like, how did, how did you know I was school vice captain? Yeah, so I think school vice captain was a bit more relaxed at my school um, because for me, the captain is a returning student and they shoulder a lot of the administrative duties, all of the meetings and all that. So for me, it was relatively okay. 
Plus we had COVID as well. So there were a lot less events. So honestly, for me, it was fine. Um, I would have to allocate time to speeches and all that. But the teachers were really understanding when I had sex and all that. But honestly, for me personally, they, they never really clashed. There was never a moment when I was like, I'm so busy with my captain duties and I'm also so busy with my studying as well. But the best way to manage anything is to be ahead. So complete your work. This is my really big advice for studying as well. Just complete your work as early as possible because you never have the time you think you will have. So if you think I'll have tomorrow free, it'll be you know a lovely afternoon of studying. I can leave this task for later. You'll suddenly get a, a, a captain duty to do or your friends might ask you to go out or you know your teacher might um, hold you guys back for some sort of special lecture. Those things, the amount of times that happened coincidentally was sort of mind blowing to me. So when you can get it done, get it done now. So then tomorrow when new things pop up, you can work on those new things. And if they don't, then you can work on perhaps your captain duties and all that. So hopefully that helps. I got 32% on my chem sack. Could I still redeem myself? Yeah, yeah, you can. Like anytime you guys ask me that, the answer is going to be you can. Do you think choosing three sciences is too much? I think if you enjoy them, no. It's just like another subject. Three maths, three, three sciences, three Englishes. Don't think too much about it. Like it's just another subject. If you're good at it, you enjoy it, then I don't see any obstacle to picking it. Uh, will you do private tutoring like for English? I do do private tutoring. So that yeah, that's a yes. Hey Darren, David. Uh, this is from David. What's your advice on memorizing Chinese oral? Do you have any techniques that helped? Uh, the best technique is to just go question by question and keep practicing it till you know it. So you start with your question like, 请你介绍一下你自己. So introduce yourself, say it. Okay, you might get some stuff wrong, say it again. You feel a little more confident with it. You can have a bit of a structure in your head. So okay, in my response, I talked about you know, my family first and then a bit of my hobbies. You can have a bit of that structure. Once you're semi-fluent, move on to the next question and then maybe cover you know five questions and then tomorrow, revise them again. So you're not going to get them perfectly in your head in one day because that's not how memorizing things works. Um, but get it a little bit more fluent, have a bit of a structure in your head, make sure you're analyzing it, then make sure you're sort of saying it out of confidence rather than like your really short-term memory and then just putting in persistent effort. It's really annoying, but once you've memorized it, you've memorized it and you're very proud of it. And when you perform it, you can really savor it as well. Is vice captain a lot more chill than captain? Yeah, it definitely was for me. Um, because our captain like shouldered a lot of the, you know, the meetings with principals and all that. Um, but yeah, I did still have to make speeches, um, work with the prefects and organize events as well. Do you think your special exam to school? I do know. I think I lost like seven, seven marks maybe. You can message me later early as well. Uh, later as well. I can check properly. Hey Darren, did you have any initial nerves going into sax and how did you change and sustain better mentality? Okay, so this is from YDD. Um, did you have any initial nerves going into the sack? Did you change and sustain a better mentality? This ties in with the question earlier, which asked that uh, I seem mentally strong. So how do I maintain it? So this is a sort of mentality Let's tackle this in two sides. One, nerves. Second, mentality. All right. So first with nerves, two things eliminate nerves. Okay. One is sort of your, your thinking. So if you think to yourself, you, you don't want to think too much about it. You don't want to think about your end of your exam. You don't want to think about your ATAR, whatever. When you sit the exam, focus on the exam, focus on the questions. So that, that sort of conceptual shift. And also think to yourself, you know, these sacks now, they're a practice for the end of your exam. They're not that massive just yet. The other way that really helps to eliminate nerves that I think is the number one way is that you've put in the effort and you've done it before. So if you've put in a lot of work for maths every day and you've sat practice exams under time conditions at home quite often, then who cares, all right? You go into the exam, it's just another Tuesday. You go in, you do the best you can. If you lose some marks here, you learn from it, but like it, failure shouldn't be something you're scared of because you've put in the effort. If you don't do well, then it was the best you could do at that time. So learn from it for the next assessment. But at least you've put in the effort. So I really think that work ethic will eliminate your fear. So if you put in effort, you put in consistent effort and you've practiced well, then the exam is just executing what you've done many, many times before. And 
yeah, if something extraordinary happens, then it happens. But you shouldn't be, you know, too nervous about anything. And with mentality, I had a bit of a weaker mentality at the start of the year. Like I said, when I got my first English sack back, I was really unhappy. Um, But towards the end of the year, because there were so many sacks, I developed the mentality of taking things as they came. So this assessment, I'm focusing on this. I have my preparation set up beforehand. I, I do the assessment. I focus on the next assessment that might even be later on in the day. So just being very systematic. You don't want to be too like, sporadic and just think oh i have this assessment now i'm so nervous i'm going to cram for it oh phew, i just made it through that assessment okay i got to prep for the next one i'm a bit behind if you keep going like that you're just going to be nervous and nervous and just unprepared but if you have structure so i do work i, I do work every day i complete my practice sacks i reach the assessment i execute what i've done i finish it i move on to the next assessment i think that kind of system will help you a lot and just having patience as well. Like it's a long time. If you don't do well today, you can do well tomorrow. You have another sack next week. Things will be up and things will be down. And it's just sort of riding the waves well. That's really important for maintaining a good mentality. And for me, my mentality, I think, was developed a lot through both my my experience with VCE, sort of a lot of assessments, both my experience in uni. I think I my mentality was a bit weaker in the first year of uni, but also through swimming as well. I thought swimming and sport was really helpful for me. Because you really have to push yourself a lot when you swim, when you play sport. And I thought that really helped shape my mentality. And also listening to people on YouTube as well. You might see me post a lot of swimming people's quotes because I really respect them. And I feel like when you look at someone like Michael Phelps, there's someone and his coach, they had to manufacture like a, 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 a really long 15 year, whatever long plan of training every day, working towards a goal, being consistent writing the ups and downs of, you know, him being caught, I think, drink driving, but also, you know, bouncing back from that. I think you can learn a lot from other people's journeys as well. So hopefully that helped. Uh, How do you contact me for private tutoring? You can DM me. Yeah, or email me, whatever. I haven't full for this year though, unfortunately. Okay, how many hours of study did you do each day? And on what? (laughs) Jaden, good to see you. I'll get to your comment in a bit. Okay. So, uh, what was the question? How how many hours of study did I do each day? It would vary a bit. I never counted it by hours. I would just do it until I was you know, a bit tired, take a break, do a bit more, do some tasks. So yeah, I, I really can't give you a good answer there, unfortunately. Uh, and on what? So I try and do my homework earlier on and try and study ahead a bit if I had a sack coming up. So once again, I really trusted myself. So I never set things that were too rigid, but I would complete my homework. And if it was useful, I would spend more time on it, like a homework essay. But otherwise I, you know, would study ahead a bit if I thought that was necessary. So if I thought that, okay, I'm pretty happy with how I'm going right now. I want to be a little bit more prepared for the next topic. Then I would study ahead. So it was very flexible for me. And that's how I think studying should be. Do you have a waiting list? I do have a waiting list. Yeah. Um, yeah. Feel free to DM me or message me, Andreas. Um, thanks for you know considering me as your tutor. How do you stop comparing with peers so much? So good question from Emmy. I think like I think it takes time. I don't realize when like it's. I feel like it's hard as something that just clicks. But really, like who cares? Like maybe me telling you will help you. But them doing well, them doing worse. I don't really care about that. It's got nothing to do with me. It will not affect how I do. I have my own strategies of doing things. I will trust myself, focus on myself and try and do well in the assessments. And whatever score I get, I will get. You know, they will have different things. You will have people who do really, really well. You will have people who um, do badly. I think just sort of focusing on yourself and as long as I was working towards my goals, I was happy with that. So I think if, if you're someone who like isn't working towards your goals and you see other people doing well, then it can be very demoralizing. But if you're someone who's working towards your goals, then I think in your mind, you're like, I'm putting an effort towards what I want. So however other people do shouldn't be too relevant um, to you. But yeah, it's not that useful. I know some people seem like they're you know so smart and doing so well, but you know that's them. You, know, you want to work on yourself. How do you deal with those people who make everything a competition? I mean, let, the, let them like, I don't, like I just, I just interact with them if I have to. Like if they, yeah, just 
I think I don't I don't pay too much attention to them. I don't treat them any differently to someone else in my class. So it's just another person. Yeah, good samurai. That's that's exactly how I would approach it. It's just another person. Treat them how you would a normal person. Yeah, Jaden, when am I coming to Gold Coast? So a lot of my swimming um, friends are racing at nationals for swimming. So if you guys want to pop a good luck, go for it. Um, but yeah, I will not be going to Gold Coast, but I will be there. You, you will hear my cheers from there, from Melbourne. Uh, no worries, Wimley. How was your health during VC? Uh, my health was fine. I, I tried to sleep. I think it was decent. I think the main reason I slept late was because it was locked down and I'd like be playing games with some friends and stuff. But um, apart from that, it was okay. I remember once I slept at like four or something before my... Because I wanted to hand in some creative sack work to my teacher. And then I had to wake up at like 7.30 for school. And my creative sack was my worst sack. So I think that that's a lesson to be learned there. Yeah, thanks, Emmy. Uh, yeah, good luck to everyone in my swim team. Scarlet's in the swim team, Jaden as well, and some of the other guys. Charles, if I did kind of bad on a special sack, but I'm still rank two, does that affect? No, nah, it doesn't affect much. I think ranking is a bit more important, but you obviously want to do well because if you lose a lot of marks, then you want to focus on those marks in the end of your exam. You might be losing them again in the end of your exam, and that will be far more costly. For goal setting for UCAT these holidays, should I be setting goals like get up to 800? Yeah, yeah. Very good question, Pete. This gets to the heart of it, right? Like what type of goals should you be setting? Should you be setting like I want to be rank one or should you be setting like very consistent things? I think both. I think it's like the fact you want to get above 800, you want to get rank one is something that will motivate you, but it's not something you should think about every day. More day to day, you should think about those skill based ones. So not even high accuracy, but more like I want to be able to have a strategy for syllogism. So I want to make sure I draw a table slowly. I fill in it carefully. And then if I get the question wrong, I get the question wrong. Right? I can work that out later. But I want to make sure at least I have an approach towards it that I can control. So high accuracy is not really something you can control. But making sure you draw a graph for each one, making sure you read each one properly, that's something you can control and that's something you should set as a goal. Leon, I appreciate it. Thank you. Simona, do you have any tips to improve with a subject that you're not good at? Uh, it depends on what the subject is. But my two biggest pieces of advice... I'll, I'll give to my... I'll go to my two biggest pieces of advice. Give me a sec. So my first piece of advice for improving at a subject that you're not so good at is this. Be patient. Okay? If you're not good at a subject... This is me as well. In medicine, I was a bit behind, um, especially in the you know, earlier years. It was being patient and understanding that it takes time for you to get good at something, which is fine, which is normal, okay? Once you're good at it, you're good at it. Like, that, that's it. That's the end of the journey. So, understanding that it will take steps for you to get there. Um, and the second advice is to, like, like, actually start. So, find tasks that are important. Be very proactive about it. Talk to your teacher. Work on practice questions. But focus on one thing at a time as well. So, focus on one topic, one style of question, and work on that. Um, how often did you have to decline meetups with, with the homies? I didn't ever have to decline meetups with the homies. I, I don't decline really to study. I don't really do that. I decline because I don't want to go or like I'll just prefer being at home. Yeah. I think in general you shouldn't decline because there, you shouldn't really decline to study in my opinion, especially this early on in the year. I think if you, if you feel like being with them, you'll enjoy it then go for it. Have you done a UCAT video? Yes, I do have a couple UCAT videos. Please just search up Darren Tan UCAT. They will come up. Uh, do I listen to music? Sometimes I do. I, I don't think like people talk about evidence and stuff. Like don't think too much about it. If you I, I use music when I feel tired. So when I'm a bit tired and a bit, you know, and I'm not going to do something so important. It's not like I have serious sack prep to do. Then I might play some music. But, um, you know, usually I don't really study with music just because it's it's not my style. And thank you guys. Mel, good to see you. Um, Socrates, yeah, thanks for the support. Okay. Adrian, when did you start prep for UCAT? I started at the start of year 12. But I was also... Because I'm like decently... 
good at my subjects. So UCAT was kind of like something else that kind of tests your intelligence. So when I started, I was doing decently at it, which meant I didn't need as much time. But I think it's good to start in year 11, just to sort of gauge where you're at. Joshua, don't know if you already answered the UCAT SAC score question. Could you repeat that? UCAT SAC score in one sentence is a bit confusing. I think I answered a lot of the UCAT questions. Um, yeah. Were you the one who usually organized meetups with friends for sports? How often do you meet your friends up during year 12? So year 12, we had COVID. So I didn't meet up with them a ton outside of class because I would have been arrested. However, like I see my friends every day at school. So I didn't really feel like I needed to meet up with them too much outside of school. And we would occasionally go to study in the in, the, in like library, RMIT or in the city, um, which is quite nice. But not like too much because I literally saw them every day. And I wasn't really the one to organize them. I would organize occasionally if I sort of missed them. If I like, do you guys want to go study this time? Or do you want to play basketball this time? But yeah, I wasn't the one who usually organized. Chris, thanks for the love heart. Down the line. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I share quotes. Like a lot of quotes that people say a lot. But if you really think about them, they actually take on many different meanings. Which is why I thought it'd be nice to share with you guys. Do you think that doing unlimited, untimed UCAT practice can help develop the skills needed for time practice? Oh yeah, so they do different things, right? So it's just like English essays, handwriting, typed, they do different things. So Emmy, you're very active in this chat. So hopefully you hear my question. What do you think, what, what do you think might be different about you doing an untimed UCAT versus a timed UCAT? So what different purposes do you think they might serve? And if you get it wrong, like, or if you have a different interpretation to me, it, it really doesn't matter. Just give you a best shot. I'd be curious to hear what you think. Down the line, do you do group study? I do group study like if I want to see my friends. But usually I study on my own because I feel like I feel like when I want to see my friends, I want to see my friends. Right? I don't really want to go and study with them. Yeah, I can do most of my studying just at home. Cool. Joshua, did your sack scores? Oh, yes, yes, I remember this question. Okay, my answer to this, I don't know. Yeah, my answer to this was that my UCAT was in the middle of my mid-year holidays. So my SAC scores didn't drop because my UCAT didn't have much overlap with my SAC scores. So yes, I did do a mock every weekend, but you know, that doesn't take that much, doesn't detract too much from my studying. I might, you know, not do one on the weekend if I had a SAC on Monday or whatever. But in the holidays, my UCAT was, my holidays were three weeks, UCAT was in the middle. So week and a half before, focus on UCAT, week and a half after, focus on my SACs, and that's plenty of time. And I was on top of my work beforehand as well. So it didn't really require me to, you know, be too, too sacrificial with anything. Uh, with tips to prevent this, I think arrange your UCAT time well. And also make sure you allocate time for your UCAT each week. And then outside of that time, like if you, like for me, I was like, okay, I'm pretty happy if I do a practice mock exam every weekend. And I just put in a little bit more practice during the week when I can. I was like, if I do that, pretty happy with it. Because my first mock particularly, I did decently. I think I got like 90 or 91, which is, you know, enough for uh, for like an interview for medicine. And I was like, outside of that, then I can focus on my sex, whatever. So I think it's really being purposeful with your time, saying to yourself, how much time do I want to allocate to UCAT to be happy with? And then leave that there, keep it discreet, and then spend the other time, you know, preparing for your sex and all that. And it shouldn't really sacrifice it too much. Um, an analogy when learning to roll obey. Some people learn by going fast and falling over, while some learn by going slowly and speeding up. Yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, very good analogy, Emmy. I really like that analogy. So for me, in, in from my point of view, they, they serve different purposes. So I really liked doing untimed for DM, decision-making, because in my mind, I was like, decision-making are questions I should definitely get right. I feel like if I got and I had enough time with graphs and stuff, I should be able to figure it out. So it was just a matter of learning how to draw the graphs well, which you can't really do under timed conditions. So I just did that slowly, tried to get them right. Whereas for something like quantitative reasoning, my maths was pretty good. A lot of it was timing and trying to find things quickly. And so I would do a bit more time practice for that. But generally like sort of untimed is just developing my strategies, getting things right. Timed was to practice doing it under pressure but I would also try and review my mistaken questions afterwards as well. So it was kind of like timed practice followed by untimed review, if that makes sense. I became more competitive after tennis. Yeah, 
Very good, Samuel. How did sports have an impact on mentality and sense of personal achievement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I think sports are brilliant. Um, for me in swimming, each time you swim, you're like, it is a near-death experience, especially if you really push yourself and you have a hard set. I think for things like running and, and swimming and even other sports as well, but particularly ones where like you have, you, know, you need to swim a certain distance in a certain time, you need to be pushed really, really hard. And each time I had to focus on what was coming. So if I had to do 100 meters 10 times on a time cycle that I thought was pretty hard, I wouldn't be thinking, oh wow, there's 10 of them. I would be thinking, get through this one, focus on my stroke, focus on you know breathing well, and then focus on the next one and take on each one as it comes. And then my body would be in pain, but I would try not to focus on that. So I think that sort of toughness will helped a lot. And also if you just put yourself in difficult situations a lot, then when you study, you're much easier to be focused to sort of appreciate it. And yeah, so like, I feel like you guys would probably relate as well. So if you probably had, if you've done VC and then I give you like, you know, a couple of multiplication tests, you're going to find it a lot easier. So if you put yourself in stressful situations often, then they become, you become more acclimated to them and you're, you sort of develop strategies uh, with them. So yeah, tennis is good, Samuel. Uh, Dandelion, yeah, yeah, that's a good interpretation, similar to mine. And Mildes's question, should you consider the salary of your profession? If yes, why not just work towards a business instead of working full-time for someone else? That's a very interesting question. So, yeah, you should definitely consider the salary of your profession. Um, but you do remember, like, if you want to do well in... I think you can do well in any profession, particularly with the, the way it is now. Like, TikTok, you have people, like, making pizza and recording themselves, and that becoming like, I, I think like millions of dollar kind of business. But if you don't like it, you're not going to get very good at it. You're going to hate every day and it's not going to be very useful. And I think it's a very holistic approach. You need to look at the salary, but generally like most occupations will don't vary too much in salary in terms of like you can live off it. Um, so I think your personal preference is important as well, what you like and also what your personality you think is suited towards. But also like just trying different things and seeing works what works for you as well. Um, Ari, what's your opinion on prioritizing subjects depending on what you predict to be in the top four? I didn't prioritize until the end of the year. I don't think it's very clear. Um, uh, yeah. I think you should work hard at all your subjects because generally it's not too clear what your top four will be. And also, I think when you start sacrificing things, you become less efficient with your study. So you say to myself, oh, I can sacrifice this because I have so much time on this particular subject. But then, like I said, the dilemma with so much time is that a lot of it may be wasted and you've neglected that subject. And also when you do badly in some subjects, I feel like it has a ripple effect because you just feel bad. You feel behind. You feel like you're not doing as well. And you sort of comfort yourself with the fact that, oh, I'm going to do well in this other subject. But I don't think that's a good mentality to have. So I think generally you want a pretty balanced approach um, up until, you know, unless you have sacks really clustered together or the end of your exams. Um, I've been struggling because I had four sacks the past two weeks and literally did zero UCAT. Yeah, that, that's fine. Like, if you've been busy and you've honestly spent your time well and you haven't been able to do UCAT, that's okay. Right? Not doing too much UCAT this early on in the year is not going to cost you too much. Do I make notes online or offline? I haven't really heard people say make notes offline as a term, uh, but I usually made online because it's easier to refer to and look at but now in medicine like i take kids in hospital it's a bit weird if i carry an ipad around so a lot of my notes are just written on paper reflection is important good dandelion uh i'm going to bed now yes yes go to bed i will end the live fairly soon i think because it is getting late um but yeah thanks for your you know participation emmy it was good having you uh, thomas did you do accidents and syntax not not accidents and syntax i think we were more asked like principal parts um, what else was there? Uh, mood, gender, no, mood, tense, voice, um, number, gender, case. We weren't really, we didn't really do too much accidents and syntax. Uh, samurai and feel like a dandelion. I see myself out. Yes, sure. See you later, Samurai. Thanks for participating. And you had some really good questions. And P, how should you go about reflecting on past sex from term one? So teacher's feedback is important for the subjective ones. And for the like it's just for any assessment. So look at the questions you got wrong and think about why you got them wrong. Dumb mistakes, misunderstanding, whatever, and focus on that. All right, good stuff, guys. I think I might end it at 10.30.
if there are no more questions. Thank you for joining and I hope you guys found this live useful. And also, if you have any ideas for future lives, message me, um, leave a comment under the YouTube channel. Also, make sure to enjoy your holidays as well. So I'll give a, a couple more minutes, but otherwise I will end the live. How am I finding uni as a whole? I did not enjoy it more than high school for the first, like, I think it's different. First two years, I definitely didn't enjoy as much as high school. Third year, I, it's different and it's similarly enjoyable, I would say, to high school. It's just a different type of enjoyment. Um, because medicine, it's a very much more clustered field. As in, like, everyone's, like, a doctor or studying med. Whereas high school, it's much more diverse. I like that aspect. But also, like, you know, I, I want to study medicine. So, it's, like, I enjoyed as well. But first two years of uni, I did not enjoy as much as high school. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Ah, thanks for all the thank yous, guys. I appreciate it. Um, add Ari, the sax my chem teacher set are completely different to the exam. What do I do? Well, you have to do well in the sax, right? So focus on those, but also make sure you supplement yourself with a lot of topic tests and exams. So my plan with the lives are to have them weekly. So hopefully next week, unless something extraordinary happens. Oh, thanks, Simona. I'm really glad to hear that. I see you commenting on my you know, TikTok and my YouTube channel, and I think Instagram as well. So thanks a lot for the support. Yeah, no worries, Chris. That's all right, Thomas. All right, I'll end the stream at 10.30 then. I'll give it three more minutes. Whatever happens, happens. Yasaru, hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Welcome from Sri Lanka. I'm an Australian medical student and this is just some high school advice that I'm passing on, if that gives you some context to what's happening. Socrates, why don't you make a uh, a Discord community? Because I don't know how to use Discord. I have Discord. I can send messages. But yeah, I guess it's not high in the priority. I want to be consistent with my YouTube and work on my Instagram as well. I don't see too many benefits of a Discord community unless you guys you know really want one and you can see a lot more benefits. Um, but also the technological technological limitations as well. I don't. I'm not very good with uh, Discord. Okay, all right. If it's seconded, I'll consider it. I'll try and figure out something. I think you need like you need like mods and servers and yeah. I will need to research into it. Do I <sighs> Scarlet? Do I follow any Premier League teams? I do not. I um, I watched the World Cup and that's about the end of my relationship with soccer. I also fell asleep during the grand final because it was at an absurd time. But yeah, it, like what Premier League team do you follow? I'd be keen to hear about it. I have friends who are pretty into soccer. Okay. And when it's 10.29, I get like four questions. All right, let's answer these. Uh, what's your motivation for YouTube? I mentioned it earlier. I think I just started it with not like some grandiose ambition. I wasn't like, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to change the lives of people, whatever. I just thought, you know, I really want to make a YouTube channel. It's pretty cool. I have knowledge I want to share. And I just feel like it'd be nice sort of having my own little YouTube channel and sharing advice there. And from there, it's kind of grew. I've enjoyed it more. I like sharing information. I just had a lot I wanted to talk about as well. And I enjoy sort of lives and interactions like these. So that would probably be my motivation. Tips for high marks for spesh. Uh, know the content well. Do practice questions. And review your mistakes like thoroughly. So not just, okay, I got this wrong because I misread the question. I got it wrong. I misread this word because I thought it was this. Because they're similar due to this. And I'm going to avoid it next time by doing this. So hopefully that helps. Watch any anime? Not for a while. I've been reading... What was I reading? I read Lookism. There is an anime out for that, I think. And in terms of other manga, uh, Kangen Omega. 
I used to watch... What did I watch? I like Slam Dunk, but that was a while ago. I don't remember the last time I watched an anime, actually. But, yeah, I, I do, like, watch anime. Do you have any recommendations, Mildus? Uh, can you f- fix my graphic designing? Sure. You can DM me, message me. I am working on my graphic designing, but if you have suggestions, very good to hear. Spurs? I thought you asked Premier League team. I thought, isn't that an NBA team? Uh, it's his profile pic. Yeah, lookism is my profile pic. Uh, uh, tips to do well in English methods. Okay. Uh, in short, English, receive feedback until you're getting the marks you want. Read your text carefully. Analyze well um, for methods. I also use like simple language for English. Like straightforward sentence structures that are easy to understand. Methods, like I said, with the spesh. Know the content well. Do practice questions. Review your mistakes. Have I watched The Last Dance? Yes, I have. It was nice to watch. I watched not all the episodes, I think, parts of it. But yeah, I think it's nice. It's pretty cool to see. Like I said, Michael Jordan is someone whose work ethic and mentality I sort of admire and take inspiration from. So that was nice. Yeah, how'd you find it? Oh, Stan's Gate. I've heard of that. I That's on the to-watch list, actually. When I have a bit of time, I, I will you know have a look at it. Um, no worries, William. Good night. Um, Chris, oh, Tottenham. Oh, Spurs. Okay, whoops. Okay, <laughs> that shows my soccer knowledge. But yes, that's good to hear. Okay, it might be boring. I'll keep that in mind. All right, thank you very much, guys, for tuning in to the live stream. I think I'll call it there for tonight. Um, enjoy your nights, have a good holiday, and yeah, just enjoy your weeks and set aside time to studying, but also time for whatever else you want to do. See you guys later.